And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Zoe Vi Ezreal, our first donation deck of the day. We're gonna have three donation decks on this Wednesday night stream. We're back on over to Targon after ye yesterday's no Targon Tuesday, um, but we do have some Targon donation decks. We're gonna get to, gonna get to them with this one and then Nightfall Aggro afterwards, and then we'll be playing a Lee Sin deck with Go Hard. Um, but let's take a look at this one. So we got about half and half with PNZ and Targon. You know, we'll be we're going to be a Zoe deck. We got three Zoes. You know, Spacey Sketcher going along with the Zoe. Um, but then our other champions are going to be one Ezreal, two Vi. Um, both both very good champions and pretty underrated champions. Uh, we're going to have um, all three star shapings in here to be able to help us out with the late game. Um, a lot of like little one ofs that that I honestly like. You know, I like. Spell Thief and um, like the Trail of Evidence is, is an interesting one. There's some good two mana cards in Targon. Chumplum can get us those Mushroom Clouds that we can um, either cast and uh, be another spell or we can discard them with Spacey Sketcher. Um, I like the two Bastions. I think that protecting all of our champions are going to be pretty important. Um, and I like how we have a lot of ways to kill Aphelios. We got three Aftershock, three Thermogenic Beam. Those are probably going to be important removal spells. Um, so yeah, it looks like we have a pretty good one here. So let's give it a try. Heading on over to Ranked. Okay, Ezreal Aphelios. Same regions. The deck that we're currently playing right now was made before Aphelios. Um, before like the knife, before like the Pill Cascade nerf. Before Aphelios, um, was printed this donation deck's from a little while ago, but um, <clears throat> we're still running it with the, the same version from before. Because it, it looks just fine. It doesn't like seem like there's anything that, that necessarily needs to be changed. So I like, I you know, because there are a ton of these PNC Targon decks these days with all these ballistic bots. And so Thermogenic Beam is a card that I haven't always thought is the best, but I, I do think it's in a pretty good spot right now because it can kill um, Ballistic Bot on turn two. I think that's pretty important. All right, all good options. Yeah, all good options. Um, yeah, I like them all. I'm gonna actually maybe just take the travel. Yeah, I'm gonna just take the traveler. Th keep thinking that this is gonna be a longer game. My spirit shines. All right, we do have three aftershocks. I, I hope we draw one of those. So I think I'm gonna just go with the traveler. I don't. We don't really need to play Ezreal right now. Hmm. The Cosmic Inspiration has the highest upside. Devotion through battle. I kind of want to just play Vi. Wow, we got two of those. Here comes the punchline. So this should, yeah, because they—I don't think they were gonna have, you know, even if they had thermogenic beam, that was—that wouldn't kill Vi at that point. And now I can have Bastion to protect Vi. We were peaceful once. <laughs> he played against Twisted Fate Aphelios five times in a row today. Yuck. I wonder what they really think about, you know, what, what Rai's really thinking about just, um, Time for a true just Targon right now. If they, you know, like, how balanced do they, do they think this region is? Like, what, like, what are they, like, what are their opinions on a Targon?
Okay, awesome. That'll do it. Got a quick win there for the first one. Anivia Control. Lava says Sharima will balance Targon. Yeah, it'll, it'll be real interesting. You know, like we're, we're only a month away, um, only a couple of weeks away now from getting a brand new region uh, with Sharima. We'll have to see because it's, is it going to be a, a incredibly powerful region like Targon? Like, will it have tons and tons of card advantage and, you know, created cards and all that kind of stuff? Mm. Will be interesting for sure. So this is a matchup where we don't really need the... We don't really need um, those things. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm good with words sometimes. We don't need removal in this matchup too much. What we want is we want good threats and cards that, you know, create other cards like this. Card advantage. Um, or cards that end the game quickly. That's what we want. All right, Moonsilver or Trickster. Like, they, they do a great job of, like, the one damage. I don't want this charger. It's Moonsilver or Trickster. Um, I think I'm going to just take the Moonsilver to be able to cast this Star Shaping earlier. Um, but I'm <clears throat> I'm getting that out of my hands. Because I, I want to keep the two mana for... Right, I want to be able to Bastion uh, this thing. By this thing, of course, I'm talking about Zoe. Ramping pretty good. Tell me, mask, secure me tail, start to die. Where are you at? Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we're not that close. I honestly don't know any of the the Sharima champions. The question is, like, what champion do I, do I wish they would print? Um, I'm somebody that I've actually never really played um, League of Legends. I'm a, you know, a card player that's that switched over to Legends of Runeterra because I really like this card game. So I, I'm not actually familiar with the other champions. I'm not sure which one of these I want to Moon Silver. I guess it's Star Shaping. Could be the Bastion and just have it so, like, my three spell mana cast Bastion. Because basically, if I play something and then they just play a Nivea right afterwards, I'm going to be a little sad. So that's six. That's what I'm scared of. I'm scared of a Nivea right now. Cast this thing. Alright, I like the Trickster more. But I think I'm going to grab the Charger for leveling up Zoe. So it'd be 7, because it's just going to level up Zoe super fast. And it, just for a lot cheaper.
I use a lot of my mana. Still play Anivia pretty easily. Maybe I just go Mystic Shot. Okay, can't play Anivia anymore. Unfortunately, this, this Mystic Shot won't count. Ooh, that's not bad. So that's only number 8. And then that's number 9. And so I could just throw away... Yeah. So I throw away the Thermogenic Beam to level it up. Or, let's see, so next turn I'm going to have 7 mana, so I cast a star, I just cast a star shaping at the beginning of the next turn and just heal the chump lump, I guess. But I guess, oh no, because if I, if I play the star shaping, then I can't, can't have Bastion available. I should have just played the zero mana thermogenic beam. So no no behold the infinite for me. up Bastion. No, they haven't drawn, or at least they haven't played Anivia yet. I'm pretty happy about that. It doesn't seem like they've drawn Anivia if they haven't played Anivia. So I gotta get rid of a card in my hand before I attack with the Zoe. It's not exactly getting rid of a card in my hand, I know. So casting the, the Bastion here so that, you know, Zoe will hit them and we'll make the zero mana behold the infinite. Alright, we're going to be trying to obliterate Anivia's. We have three times as many cards in hand as they do. 
And it seems like we've hit them a million times, but they're still at 12. <laughs> Come punk pickpocket. Still have six mana for an obliterate card if they do play an Anivia. I think that one of their cards in hand is a third Glimpse Beyond, because they like almost played it before after they played the two Glimpse Beyonds. So I think if they do find an Anivia and I obliterate, they will be able to sacrifice the Anivia. I believe. Alright, well they found Anivia. And we'll see if that's the case or not. I hope that's not the case. I hope this just gets obliterated. Okay, that's great. That's great for us. Play in these things and then they play in Anivia. I want to have, I want to have my Supernova available. So with Supernova, that means I have four other mana. I would play this. Get the Traveler. Another obliterate card, and that'll do. Targon's pretty broken. Just hey, what what are you facing? Oh, you're facing Anivius. You need a bunch of obliterates. Go grab that. <laughs> you just you just get get to pick whatever whatever you're facing. You just get to make your your whole deck great against whatever you're facing. Yeah, when you play Targon, you build your deck in game. <laughs> yep. It's a, it's a deck building game. All right, so we are also facing another Targon deck, Victor Aphelios. Um, I think that I want. Yeah, we can keep that. I'm, I don't think I want the Mystic Shocks. It doesn't kill those two champions. <laughs> Look, at this Look how sparkly. So I think my plan is to play the pickpocket on turn two. Like the spacey sketcher can discard the super cool star chart, uh, but then we also have like this chump on here that's going to make these mushroom clouds. Those are also great things to discard. If their plan is like turn two ballistic bot though, like if I go pickpocket on turn two and they just go ballistic bot, and then I I can attack in with like both of these on turn two and and force a pretty awkward situation for them. We are just on turn two, though. My opponent's going to have to play a lot faster than that. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to be here for 20 minutes. Alright, go get him, pickpocket. There's a bunch of pressure. You know, like, Zoe puts a ton of pressure on them, and then, you know, now pickpocket puts more pressure on them. That creating... Star shaping, pretty awesome. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna try to grab Equinox. No Equinox. Um. Let's just pass the turn. I can see like the star shaping pairing with, or sorry, the serpent pairing with Static Shock. Or just Serpent. Pale Cascade. Uh, what's our current rank? We're some we're somewhere in Master's rank. 
hundred something points. I don't know. What do I want to do here? Maybe just simply to play this priestess. Or I play actually maybe play Chumpwomp. Let's do that. I assume they're gonna be playing this ignition. And I also assume they're not gonna have anything else. With one mana. Okay. So this would this will allow me to have the pickpocket hit them again. Let's I can either just like let this happen and then like have my static shock work on killing this, or I can go with the pill cascade. Pill cascade route leads me with three mana, which is fine. Which gives me another sketcher and Yo, know, so I have another pill cascade here for protection against like a mystic shot. Pickpocket's looking great. Taking a star shaping and a hush so far. Sunlight guided, my brethren. They're gonna start having great turns though now with the Veil Temple. And here's where I paint my constellation. We were peaceful once. And they have Aphelios, so Aphelios plus Veil Temple. Even with all the stuff that we just did, it's going to be tough to beat Aphelios plus Veil Temple, because I don't... I am not sitting on removal for that, and they did not give me any removal for that either, so... Uh, okay, zero out of six. So only six more. Ezreal used to take, you know, like 8 and then 10 to level up, so now we only need 6 to level up. None of these are very good. I wanted the deal 4, deal 1 card. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. Uh, 0430 asks, what would be the best way to nerf Aphelios? I think the card has to completely change. Honestly, I, I think that how it is right now is not... I don't, I don't think there's any like small change that you can do to the card to make it acceptable. Alright, so I was planning on getting rid of the... I was planning on getting rid of the Hush, but now we kind of need the Hush. Yeah, like, I, I think a, a lot of things in the card need to change. Excuse you. Um, like, just basically, all these moon weapons are too strong. <laughs> They're all too strong. Picking five moon weapons is pretty silly. All right, so I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have played that Spacey Sketcher, so I would have had the mana for Pill Cascade. Um... You know, being a three mana three three, where you also pick five. Like when you compare it to like twi you know, Twisted Fate's amazing, and it's a four mana two two, and you pick three. And this is a just a better card all the way around, and it costs less mana, and it and it's bigger. There's not very much about the card that makes sense. So I think I think it needs a lot less selection. Um, like maybe maybe you get a, a random moon weapon and then and then you always follow like the the line completely. Not not that you get to sp you get to keep on picking over cards and and uh, pick exactly which moon weapons that you want for whatever 
situation. Like, that's the thing, having five different cards you get to choose from, and then get to choose from two for, like, the exact, you know, for whatever the game situation is. It's just too much... Like, that's the problem with Targon. You have you have too much control between that and, and choosing all these invoke cards. You have too much control over everything. You get to just build your deck depending on anything. Like, it... Like, maybe if it was, like, random moon weapon, you know, random moon weapon each time, and then it just followed the moon cycle. Um, and then also either have, like, the, the moons cost more, have them not as good, have Aphelios cost more and be smaller, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, two, like, the two spell mana, you get a, a two drop that gets into play, like, that, that could maybe be, like, a one drop that goes into play, or a two drop that draws, you know, that you just draw and put in your hand. Um, the into play... For you know, two spell mana is cheaper than two regular mana, and so you get two spell mana for you know getting to tutor and put any you know you get to build your deck around that of putting the two mana unit into play. That is quite strong. There's a lot of things wrong with the card. I don't really, like, the Cesarel isn't really important to our, our final game plan right now. And so I'm kind of putting it out there that if they want to use removal on the Ezreal, I'm, I'm okay with that. We, we, I guess we don't we don't really know what they grabbed with their star shaping. If they have the 8 mana thing that is... Um, they have the 8 mana thing that, that's like a, obliterate all cards... All units that have power three or less, that would be a problem. Alright, lots of star shapings. I think I'm just gonna do that. If I try for like the deal four, they still play like another card, buff it up. Alright, we've killed two Ophelia so far. It's fine with me. No way. Mm. Sunlight guided, my brethren. We're pretty Pretty bad at finding the obliterate card. Over two. I become who I was always meant to be. All right, so. I don't want to trade the you know like mine's gonna be a 13-7. I don't want to trade that for either of these. No more hiding. We're not gonna take lethal this turn. Open your eyes. My journey is Okay, I cannot play the Trickster this turn, so it's got to be either Crescent Strike or the Charger. And I think it's the Charger. And here's where I'd paint my constellation. Right, so I'll make the Destroyer 14.
Yeah, exactly. I didn't want them to be able to play, you know, Pillcast or whatever on this warrior and... Kill that. Oh my gosh, they still had two moon weapons in hand? Alright, well, this, the stun moon weapon is just gonna end this. If Philios just too good. Maybe this thing? Maybe that thing? <clears throat> I went for like the little juke of like the 4-1 attack, not attack. Maybe they like felt they were safe and spent mana on something else. I mean I'm attacking if they have if they have hush, they have hush. No hush? Wow. Never mind, we got that. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I guess the, the best part about having those really big um, celestial cards is, you know, like how they add the power. Like, it does. The cards are already really strong. Like, why they add on extra power like that, as you see, like with, with like the destroyers and, and then the immortal fire, like why they have to be, you know, like 14 power and stuff. I don't know, but the good part about that is that the games do finally end. So that's that's the the good part about having. Um, sure, let's see. So they're yeah. I don't I don't think we need Bastion. That's the good part about adding in all the extra power. So really, it's it's you know like Boxtopus and uh, Aphelios finding Boxtopus, like Moon Weapons finding Boxtopus. That's like the problem. Like you know, like that's that's the card that can kill Zoe. That I I hope they don't have. Hopefully, they just play something else. Yeah, like that. And here's where I'd paint my constellation. GG's though. Ah, serpent. That will also kill Zoe. We're just going to do this. We're just going to discard the Spacey Sketcher. Alright, we'll take that. So we have one more card in hand than they do. And we have a 4-2 in play. But they have killed one of my champions. I'm always a Gold? Yep. Going gold. That's an underrated Dead play, the gold card. <laughs> really, now I draw a Mystic Shot? <laughs> that would have been good against that. Twisted Fate, now I have the Mystic Shot. So I want to play the Sump Treasure here because I like the 4-3. But I don't really see any of these cards to discard. I guess Static Shock would be the card to discard. So I guess I'm just going to go with the Priestess even though it's not a 4-3, but it's just not a card that I have to discard right now. Guide you, my brethren. Yeah, I, I like our hands. Keep up, keep up! And 
I almost forgot. But with this being this being the Bilgewater version, I almost forgot about Wiggly Burblefish. So I'm really glad that I didn't discard the Static Shock, because now I just remembered about Wiggly Burblefish. And of course, they have the one health spray fin. I'm still good to scrum. I mean, they can they can challenge Priestess. That's fine with me. Bask in her radiant blessing. Some blessed figure. All right, but back, to, back down to one health. I'm glad we have this static shock. Witness glory. Man, that's annoying. Okay, oh, they have to play two spells for this thing. Please don't. Just just let Aphelios die. Ugh, I can never kill this thing. Should have just aftershocked it. Okay, there we go. That's good. Because they'll play like a... They, they should be playing... Okay, the, they won't get another Moon Weapon if they play Moon Weapon. Never mind. But still, they could play Moon Weapon... And then it would buff this up to three, and they get they get two mana again. So they, if they have more, okay. Finally, they're out of protection. I was gonna say they have even more protection. Let's save that again. <sighs> okay, finally got Aphelios out here. We've killed two champions now. They've killed the one Zoe. Never lost a fair game. Or played one. Eyes open. I feel like I gotta get rid of this thing. They should still probably be able to play another... Ooh, they can't. Okay, good. Oh, extra spell this turn. Good. No. Alright, so there's two mana for a purple fish. I either go look for Equinox with the star chart, or just play Traveler. The Sun Treasure is going to be discarding the Mountain Goat. Probs. Let's play this. Um, I don't behold another celestial card as of now. It was my heart that led me here. Bring the flipping bell! Woo, you wee scruff! Have faith! Because my plan was to play Vi this turn and have Vi challenge Twisted Fates. And if I do that, I mean, I'm just going to take the Trickster for the Elusive, but um, if I do that, I can't play Trickster also. I can play the Goat. Sunlight guide, my brethren. Swinging them big fists around, Vi. Stick around. I'll show you. Well, we got the best possible. Trust your heart. 
black heretic. Oh, you're the way loved it. I'm very happy with that trade of the goat for the boxtopus. I think boxtopus is more valuable. I'm very happy with that trade. That's probably just too, too greedy here. I should have cast the supernova. Maybe they'd play something else, like an Aphelios or something. Hmm. Another best possible card. Alright, not looking good. Because this Twist of Fate's close to leveling up. How many of these static shocks we got? Just the one? That's too bad. We need more of these aftershocks. <laughs> we have been stretched thin on aftershock. They've they've done a really good job protecting their stuff. I no, I don't think so. I, I, the question is, do do you think the moonlight affliction can be gotten the new hush? I don't I don't think so. I don't think that I would ever play moonlight affliction over Looks hush. Like Just that extra two mana is too big of a hindrance. I think, even though I know you get to hush a second card. Okay, that's leveled up to a state. GG's, they, they had great cards. Great, great cards to answer what I was trying to do. Okay, prediction. I think we're gonna mulligan just about everything. Now, Static Shot can blow up barriers. Mystic Shot's very good against River Shaper, but not these so much. Um, Trail of Evidence definitely is just gonna go. And the star shaping, uh, um, it's gonna go. Okay, so we'll keep these. All right, turn one, Zoe. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the problem with playing Tart, you know, because. When you're playing Targon versus Targon, as we've seen with some of those, like those last two games against those Aphelios decks, they take, you know, they, the games go forever, because, right, because, like, neither person runs out of cards. And so that is kind of the bad part about it, is that if you, if you, uh, lose, you know, in a game where both players, um, have tons of cards, and if you end up losing, it's a, it's a pretty big feels bad. Or, you know, playing, you know, losing 30 minute games is a, at least, especially for myself, that's a a bigger feel bad than losing a, um, yeah, than losing a 10 minute game. So I was really hoping to find the 2-1 the challenger. That's what I wanted to find last turn. I don't love playing Spacey Sketcher um, against Fiora. I don't love the Spacey Sketcher. Hmm. I probably should have just discarded the tra this Trail of Evidence. I wanted the 2 1 Challenger. Because I'm worried about Sharp Sight. Alright, so no fight does mean no uh, 
no sharp sight. So we get to attack. Yeah, I should have kept the stun card. I should have discarded this trail of evidence. Who goes there? My shield is yours. Nature blesses her followers. Stop, stop, stop! Sweep them away. Honor guide me. See if they have another Nopify. Hopefully not. Yeah, I should have kept Crescent Strike. Like, this would have been a good Crescent Strike right here. I mean, if they have Nopify, they should definitely use it. Aha. Uh -huh. You called it. Yep, single combat. So the good thing there is they don't get to draw a spell. So that's not too bad. If only Pill Cascade was still plus two, plus one, right? We could go Flame Flame Chompers plus Pill Cascade. Uh, maybe I should still do that. Flame Chompers, Pill Cascade, and just attack this Green Glade Caretaker. Wow. All right. Well. What form will the waters take? So, you know, they did did get to draw another spell. We do have a few different discard cards in our deck that we can maybe potentially draw. Ooh, you're interesting. Blocking there helps out Static Shock later. Not really using any card I particularly care about. Could definitely be useful later. It's just we're not going to be able to beat a bright steel formation if they have that card. Finally, something to do. Mm. Well, I mean, I guess Living Legend is my best option. So, like, this Destroyer is just going to be like an eight-seven, which is perfectly fine. But I guess I'm going to take this Living Legends, which means I need to empty my hand, which means I need to just get rid of these Mushroom Clouds and start emptying the hand a little bit. Maybe use a bit, you know, maybe get a barrier card out of their hand. Because it definitely seems like their hand's probably a whole bunch of, like, barriers and fight spells and stuff like that. Yeah, like, I'll take that trade. Cool, another good one.
Scourge is probably pretty decent. My father's blade. All right, and got thermogenic beam out of our hand. It's always like kind of annoying because you can't ever like follow up thermogenic beam with anything else. So they're gonna do that to fight. But why would? They could have just done the exact same thing on the Shen and just had the life steal and just healed their nexus for two. But oh well. I'm not going to attack and let them star shaping or uh, sharp sights. River shape the land and give it life. So like I, I can potentially triple you know triple spell with aftershock aftershock hush, but if I play Vi, hush is going to be my only card I'm going to be able to play. Because of course we're we're definitely going going to need hush this turn. Here comes the punchline. But Vi's you know the more effective blocker of staying alive over. Certain amount of turns if they don't play any other units. Or I guess I'm just dead, aren't I? Because these all attack for three. So never mind. I guess I'm. De uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, I guess I can't. Oh, because I, I have the life steal. Okay, so we have life steal. So. So we're going to block over there. You can block there. You can block one of these things that keep you alive. And I guess the most effective block is this. Oh, but that means I die. So. Insolence. We have to go with that, but then. <sighs> but then this thing's gonna grow too. So that'll be five. Uh, let's get to the fun part. No further. Bring it. Okay, that's better. So if I don't do anything, I still stay alive and go to four. I thought that they would use a barrier on this Bright Steel Protector and then I'd have to hush this Bright Steel Protector. That's what I was thinking that I was going to have to do with this hush. I'm going to risk it. Because, you know, this could be a card that now kills me. Okay, good. But I figured if it was a card that killed me, they would have played it before instead of just passing priority to me. So I get to kind of test it out to see if, if I can play the Scourge or not. See what they do. Our wills align. Well, that was the best top deck they could possibly have. So now I need to find, like, the Obliterate 2. Or just an Obliterate card. Equinox. All right, so you cost zero. Equinox you. And then... Moon Silver, one of these things. And... Out of these... Because I guess I could have done the Scourge and played another Scourge, but... I figured I'd just play the Immortal Fire, because we can die twice. But I can't... It's hard to risk even, like, Scourge, even Scourge Challenge Bright Steel Formation, because if it if that's something like a Repost or a Sharp Side or anything that keeps that alive, then I only have two blockers and I die. Um, so it's hard hard to risk any challenge 
there because I want to have it, you know, three and three. Come on. What do they got? They got overwhelm. Well, that worked out perfectly for me. So I I should should just be able to double, you know, triple aftershock them. So they could play like, I don't know, like an, another unit and then a rally. Maybe it's deny. So after taking an entire day yesterday with no Targon Tuesday of playing all decks without Targon and that, then uh, coming back here um, for the next stream and <laughs> immediately playing, you know, a Zoe deck where we had a ton of super cool star charts. We played, you know, I don't know, like eight super cool star charts in those five games or so. Um, and, you know, with the star shapings, we had a lot of big celestial cards that were just super crazy. And yeah, it's kind of crazy just having all these celestial cards and how powerful they were after taking a day off of Targon. <laughs> and it's... These these Celestial cards are pretty insane. <laughs> but um, I think our deck was pretty good. I have to say that I was impressed with Thermogenic Beam. It's a card... Like, Thermogenic Beam is a card I haven't always loved in the past. But I think that this could be a, a pretty good Thermogenic Beam matchup. With there being so many Aphelios decks that are all playing Ballistic Bot. Not all, but, you know, like, there, there's a good amount of Ballistic Bot decks, and so it's a nice two-mana removal for Ballistic Bot. Our one of Kempunk Pickpocket was pretty awesome in one game, and so much so that I kind of want to play Pickpocket more with uh, with Aphelios. Like, if, if we were going to go, like, Zoe, Aphelios with PNZ, I wonder if Pickpocket would be another good, you know, like, the other good two-drop besides Ballistic Bot, more so than Mountain Goat. Um... Yeah, I could, I could see that. But, uh, yeah, so, like, the Aftershock and the Thermogenic Beam were both very important removal spells. And just being able to do three damage, super important these days. I could see even playing a couple of gotchas in here. Static Shock did a lot. It it really did, especially against, like, the, the um, you know, like, 3-1 Boxtopus and Wiggly Burble Fishes and that kind of stuff. I wish I had more Static Shocks. I only had the one. But it was impressive as well. All right, but there we go. That's Zoe by Ezreal. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Let me know what you thought of uh, the No Targon Tuesday day. And, you know, now that we're back to Targon decks, um, let me know what you think of this one. Um, if you try it out yourself, because uh, I was I was pretty impressed with it. You know, like it's a nice a nice 4-1 in Masters rank. Can't complain about that. That's a that's a very good record. Oh, looks like Puppy liked this one, too. Um, all right, but that's all I got here for this deck. So thank y'all every thanks everybody for watching and I will see you for the next one.